Right, at this point, this is the arrangement point, and um, what I've found recently is that I've actually, uh, uh, it, I find it better to actually work with somebody else at this point, because um, if I want to be able to sit back and, and kind of think about how the arrangement should go, sometimes when you're actually driving the thing, you can, you can actually get a bit lost, whereas if somebody else starts driving it for you, you can kind of sit back and think, right, at this point, uh, you can actually properly listen to it, and you can be more objective about it. Uh, this is Chris. Chris is... Uh, Amongst other things, he's the label manager for Slave. Uh, he also goes under the name of Christoph, uh, because with on his own and with Bobby Lorenz, as Bobby Lorenz and Christoph, he's a bit of a jack of all trades, but he's also a very good engineer. And uh, Chris has come in recently with me to sort of, um, we've been working on some projects recently where he's, you know, been engineering, um, or we've both been doing it together kind of thing. Uh, it's just good for me to have an extra pair of ears and to be, sometimes to be able to just sit back and actually think about what I want to do and, you know, and actually be able to listen to it rather than getting too bogged down with the technicalities of it you know it's, it's easier sometimes if you just sort of sat listening to actually think about an idea rather than if you're actually working with it yourself so Chris is here we're going to be doing the arrangement together basically at some points I'll be doing some bits at some points he'll be doing some bits so uh, we're both uh, we're both on it what we're doing now we've got all the parts as we mentioned before um, we're going to color these parts as well because uh, I name them all right this one is called uh, Nord uh, Pitch Mod Mod Bass. That's it. Um, that's a little riff. That's your main line. All these things underneath will leave muted for now. Um, right, Guru is pattern based, uh, and there's different ways of being able to trigger the patterns. But one way of doing being able to do it is to actually drag this from there. Into the arrangement, and what it does, it drags this pattern that you've created in this step sequence environment into your arrangement there, right? Which you then can loop, etc. Uh, and it will just it will play that again with the second engine. We can do the same thing with that pattern. We can drag it in. There we go. That pattern's obviously two bars. That's only one bar. Name that um, basic, basic rhythm, and we'll name this um, 808 drums. 808. Okay. Now when we play that. Extra. What we program there comes up there. Particularly for engine one, you can see that it mirrors that mirrors that. So, one thing to remember as well: you're going to get everything coming out unless you turn off the um, set this to gate mode instead. Otherwise, you're going to get triggered here and triggered on there as yeah. well. Okay. So you do that for both engines. All right. Bye. So what I want to do as well is this kick drum, whichever one I'm using, the second one, I want to send it through its own output. So we'll go to pad edit there, and in pad edit you've got, it says there, master out. Now we'll turn that to sub output one. Over in your auxiliary page, if we close this down, I'll move this out of the way, um, you've got guru, uh, should be, we'll choose one called guru here, instrument six. Is guru no it's instruments eight is guru three and four now that now you'll see that the bass drum comes through its own channel which we will send then to the drum bus okay now also this it's a bit boomy I think to be honest it's a bit too long so what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit, edit the envelope of this kick drum as well and in Guru, it's really easy to do. You just basically turn down the hold amount. Right, and put some release on it. There we go. And that shortens the overall sample, so it's not so long and boomy. So name that. So 
out. Um, again, the snare could do with being a bit bigger, I think, on Guru. So we'll put the Guru snare. basic arrangement we're going to start with a kick drum I think um, I reckon we could start we'll start with his original percussion here maybe actually we'll make all these like four bars uh, we'll start over here we'll start at like where should we start there's a good place to start for this 24 is it 25 Okay, we'll start at 25, and we'll start by getting all the things, all the sounds, and all the the stuff we want as a basic uh, intro. Like, damn, shouldn't we even use that as a. Yeah. It's amazing how often you come across noises by accident you actually want to use. Okay, let's bounce that rhythm down then, shall we? into the arrangement so we can actually automate that uh, audio bus 4 which is drums um, we'll drag that up here underneath all the drums here um, so at this point you know whenever we want to do the automation we can just go into the arrangement page and automate the we'll set that drums to a camel flat uh, bypass filter low that's right Eight bars of that, and then we'll kick, we'll slam it in, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, we'll use what I like, or what we like to do is use loops, don't we? Yeah. In Logic, um, which are basically uh, loops or virtual representations of the original pattern. Uh, okay. So we'll have the first. That's four bars. We'll have eight bars with it filtered down like that. After eight bars, we'll, or filtered up, sorry, we'll have a, that change down to there. Maybe keep bringing the other kick drum. Yeah, bring it in. Uh, At 33. Yeah. Okay. And that kick drum is from the 808. Now we need to 
make sure you keep everything colored there's drums in the same color as you should do with everything else but we'll get to that in a bit guru one we'll name this to um basie basie pat we'll name the bottom one to 808 Do now is we can actually edit that pattern. Um, all we want is the kick drum of that. is that when that hits it actually triggers the compressor too hard so you're losing, losing the tone aren't you of, uh, of everything what we've also got as well for the intro is some nice ambience from over here one of these things called the drone or the micro I think it might be called glitchy so if we take over glitchy from, uh, from there sound um, the logic auto filter is really nice for kind of opening up you know a rhythmical filter kind of thing which is what he's doing so there's sort of a basic intro you know it's, it's going to be a house track it's going to be a dance track that DJs want to make so you're gonna have you're gonna have to have a certain amount of uh, beats in the intro before it kind of all kicks in and which is what we've got here and then when this final kick jump well when this second kick drum comes in that kind of kicks it off so so it was going out of time. Okay, so we've got four 16 bars. Eight bars before the kick drum comes in. Our intro and then it goes yeah. into the riff maybe mm, is that yeah, like do you want to drop straight into the main main thing then uh unless it does it go with it or 
mean, the other way, the other option of doing it would be to... We can use the filter on here to kind of... I reckon it's probably going to be better off dropping to that, isn't it, after 32 yeah, yeah, bars? Yeah. A bit like his does. So you got 32 bars, that's four, eight, <laughs> dip, dip, where? And then, oh, at that point, I think, should we do it? Yeah. Just a bit, is that 32? There it is. So at that point, we'll have everything else cutting out. Um, you can stop the loops by holding Alt. Oh, it's the wrong place. Extend the loop slightly. That's right. What we'll use here, there's a drone noise, which I think is is a good way of kind of tying the two. the original pattern that we had from Guru. Take out the hats. Again, uh, on, 
use the side kick, uh, the side chain in effect for the actual main line. Without it, it kind of loses a bit of its rhythm, which you'll hear. The idea is like you can have a side chain kick running through the whole thing from your own hide it so that whatever you do to your edits for the rest of the track it's just out of the way so if you're copying big chunks of stuff about not, you're not actually losing the side chain kick or any of it. along for a bit I think after eight bars maybe we'll take we'll put in a we could probably put in the uh, kick uh, maybe the percussion there maybe put the snare in Just as a maybe as for fills at the end of the bars and things. Yeah, cool. Uh, using fast effects and reactor, um, just to just well tear it limb from limb, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Completely rips it. Reactor is brilliant because it comes with all these little ensembles, um, and uh, this one is particularly good. We found this. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we've, we're, we've been using this for a bit. It's, it's basically a, a loop mangling tool. It's a bit like yeah. beat repeat, isn't it? In, mm. in Ableton. Comes with uh, electronic instruments too, I think. Comes with electronic instruments too, yeah, for mm. Reactor. And uh, it's just a great way. And there's, there's all these different elements to it, uh, you know, which basically you can slice the thing up. You can do all sorts of stuff and completely mangle it out of all, beyond all recognition. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put that main line through this to see what we can come up with. So. Yeah. Did you can have a section of the train with you? Uh, you've got to trigger it down. Right, uh, best way of doing that. Mm, I'm recording, going back through this. Come on. Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, there's a way. Now React is good for working on files such as this main riff that we've got here because it's an, it's an already, uh, you know, it's not like we've got any MIDI parts to edit. We can't change the pitch, we can't change, well we can change the pitch using pitch shifters, etc. But it's, a, and we can't, it's difficult to rearrange the actual pattern of it because it's audio. Um, and the great way of being able to do that is by using this reactor fast effects thing, which actually like it can rearrange it, slices it into different things, it gives it a different rhythm, etc. So, you know, and it, particularly for parts where you might want it to do something a little bit crazy. Really doing that. Unfortunately, you have to bounce it down and then re-import it back into the arrangement, yeah. which is can, what we're going to do. It can be a bit now. random if you just leave it to do its thing. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, this is the random approach, kind of just bouncing things down, seeing what it sounds like, and. So. so, right, if we start recording that in, without the click, Box 
packs of frogs. Or something. <laughs> But you notice with this track as well, we're not actually going for anything too big. I mean, I, when I say mm. we're, we're, we're going to go for a big room type of thing, it, it's basically just uh, n nothing stupid. So we're not going yeah. mental, are we, on this? It's no. just that big stuffy one. Though, yeah. So. Um, I like some of the things, though, for, for, for fills. I'm just have a look at what we've got there. It's, uh, it's not really nice. That's going to phase because I've still got that one playing. too long on this because you can get carried away very easily. Totally carried away. We've spent months on this kind of stuff, haven't we? Yeah. Messing around. I did a remix, uh, the last remix I did was for Muse and I really, I really went to town on this thing. It's ridiculous. I spent a week messing around. That's nice. Yeah, totally. Um, so cut out the bits that we don't want. So, right. Okay, now, so we've got these uh, extra reactor bits that we've just bounced down from the main riff. And what we're going to do now is uh, there's some, you know, there's some just little edits there. What we're going to do is incorporate this into the arrangement. So, the first thing we're going to do is maybe use the slower one. Uh, first, I'll mute these up here. Um, the slower one is this one here. What we're going to do is maybe add that. This is going to take a bit of kind of moving around, but you'll see. Um, what we want it to do is go, if you listen to it. Uh, you want it to go. Uh, Where's the snare coming? There. crosshair tool so we want to cut out the next last last two bars of all the drums etc we use the crosshair tool to select everything in between that to those two bars simply press the mute button and you'll mute and you'll mute it in between so <laughs>
off. You've got kind of, so you've got the break, break down there. Now you're going to show a technique, Chris, where is, uh, with this bit here. Yeah, it's just where, where we drop this drone and it comes in a bit dry. If you're thinking about it. So. <laughs> kind of comes from nowhere, so what I was going to do is I'll just split off a tiny bit at the beginning. This is a way of actually introducing a sound, a sound that kind of starts a bit abruptly. It's a really good way of kind of introducing the actual sound into the arrangement. Just solo object it, and I've put a small um, verb on it, just a platinum reverb. I'm going to just take that little bit, a bit of a tail on it. Probably not quite long enough. Just stretch it out a bit. So it's now... Yeah, you can use that as a really big building effect, what we're going to do is bounce it and then reverse it and stick it before. So if I just call that drone, then we can stick that back together and just plop it straight out the audio window. That's another thing you can spend hours doing on all your noises, but the other thing you need to yeah. probably have to uh, turn it up a bit, which is a bit quiet. Change gain and reverse it. Yeah, so if I just make it a bit, probably needs to go up by about. Judging by that waveform, I'd say that's about 5 dB. So. About 5, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bit Ooh, more. a bit more. That was wrong. What I did there is I bounced it without making sure my master output was up, so it's. Schoolboy error, really. So what have you done? You bounced it with? I bounced it with, with the master down, with the channel down as well, so it would come down about 8 too small. Oh, okay. Yeah. And about 8 dB. Yeah. So then if you just go in tight, line it up, should introduce that noise a bit better. Another thing as well, if you want to uh, increase the perceived level of that, there's a thing in Logic, if you double click on it, Oh, called yeah. the uh, if, in factory you've got the thing called the audio energizer which is like an offline there you go. it's like an offline compressor um, yeah, you know, you'd about. Buy about 50 I'd say and it's just uh, what it will do is it'll just like raise the volume of the first bit of it kind of to the level of the next bit so it just mm. that might be slightly too low but we'll see you might need that basically an offline compressor that's uh, it is destructive Done it there uh, for that last beat. That's it. That's and you can do the automation. Yeah. So what I did there is just turn the reverb up, make it a bit more, get a bit more intense before it kicks in. Creates a bit of drama, sir. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, we're automating the reverb send uh, to the reverb bus. It's the reverb that D made before with the shorter envelope on it, so yeah. it dies pretty quick. So it dies pretty quick, so what you'll get, if we could put a gap at the end of there, um, yeah, copy that over, well, we'll get this effect which we'll, you'll hear in a bit. Great way of kind of snapping between two sections of an arrangement, an arrangement which gets quite intense and reverby, and then snap between the two. You might see some kind of crash in there or something. Yeah, maybe there's a thing called you go into the arena. Okay. Yeah, we've got a thing called uh, what we're gonna do is add some extra little noises of our own now. We've got one uh, a really nice little sound called uh, we'll add that in. Uh, 
like that. Okay, need to create another track in the arrangement, which is audio 20, audio 21. Um, audio 20 is the uh, fast effects bit. So, so it's the uh, fast effects. Effects. So audio 21 is now going to be, pssst, which we can drag out into the arrangement there. Now this is actually a really long sample, but we're going to cut it down so it's quite short. If we, it would be if there was anything there at all. Um, yeah, got to go in and edit the thing. Okay, there's a tight bit, and we'll have it by what a bar. Uh, pst, a beat yeah. long. ideas you know what so basically basic sort of house arrangement is you've got you know a 32 bar drum intro gives you a chance to mix into the next track then you've got to break down with the actual bass in there or the main line in there sorry but the, the main line hasn't got the bass end in it so what you're doing is you're creating a bit of tension uh, creating a bit of tension before it finally kicks back in there but it doesn't kick in too full because what we're going to do is we're going to continue to keep building it as it goes along adding extra elements kind of thing. Yeah. So that goes along there, we have to some more. That's a nice effect. Again we're gonna build it up as it goes along. We're gonna have another add an extra percussive element there. Okay. There's um, the uh, riffs as well, isn't there? That's the, right. If the, uh, yeah. So what we're going to do next is incorporate the riffs that we've created earlier using the hardware synth, um, which is these two things here. Um, let's see the next 32 bars. <laughs> Maybe we need a little fill at the end. I don't know if you want to get one of your little sounds from up here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know which one we've got. Look. Um, let's put all these on the right <coughs> channel first. Just. Does anyone who actually wants that? Does anyone really mind? Well, yes. yes. Uh, remember. The Yeah, you put the main lead in back in again afterwards. Mm. 
filter down. I mean, this is just a way of incorporating those extra uh, elements that you've created yourself into the arrangement. Just tie a bit of, tie a bit of the filter. Yeah. Just tie a bit down there. Probably a bit much. <laughs> created with uh, on the main line within here we've actually filtered that down so it leaves a bit of room to actually put something else over the top um, and we can wobble around with the extra noises <laughs> Automation on the uh, on the JP noise. It's a simple chord. Next section can be where the actual main line comes back in full again. Mm. Or um, so we can filter filter the next section. We'd have to have a little fill at this point, but. is filter perk I think uh, try that maybe and maybe another extra um, uh, hypnotic perk hypnotic perk <laughs> Okay, so I can do 
fill for for this. Can we yeah, try sure. another fill? Have a look what we got. Let's see what we've what we got. Get some more. Incorporating these reactor things again that we've used, that we've got bounced down from earlier. That might be nice. You can use that to kind of build up. Just get four bars of that. Yeah. Four bars, one bar. Just now before one two one. Like one eighteen. One twenty. Okay. Worth having some filter on that or something. Yeah. Um and obviously cut out that one. Logic's own um, drum synth thing, and I've just started using this mainly because it's quite it's it's not so processor intensive as is Guru, um, and it's quite easy to program. Firstly, we we select uh, how many steps it is, which is 16. So we want basically we want a cabasa. What we'll do is we'll just enter in a straight 16th high amp beat. We'll turn the sequencer on. There's a swing function here, which, as, we, as you know, we've got lots of swing on this, right? Now, the beauty of this is that you can actually edit the parameters again very easily in Ultra Beat. Now, we've got the envelope settings here, which I want to turn that so it's a bit more, it's a bit shorter. Uh, we've also got um, there's three oscillators basically. What we're going to use here, we're going to mess with the sound a bit. Uh. Alter the sound a bit because it's a bit sort of standard. There's the amount of swing again. Once you're happy with that, it's simply a case of actually just dragging the pattern out of there into the arrangement again, as you do with uh, with Guru. Uh, it creates a little part for you, which is roughly 16 beats long, which is a bar. And all you need to do is you can turn then turn that off. So at this point. Basically, the arrangement's growing, and each time, after 16 bars, every 16 bar, there's some kind of fill. 
uh, and then we're bringing in another element, etc. So it's kind of, but we're also swapping between uh, different sections as well, which kind of creates a bit of interest rather than it just being the same thing that's going along doing the same thing, building up, which which is what his does. Mm. It's just does the same thing all the way through. What we're doing is basically creating, you know, some extra, extra interest in there by having these extra. So yeah, we're just showing you ways of how you can kind of, you know, uh, arrange something, but you can also incorporate new elements into the track as well as the elements that are already there, uh, and how you can swap between two sections as well. Swap between a section by actually just creating little fills, which you know you create that. Uh, so you can have a big build up, and then you can have like a little fill at the end of it, or then snap into something else. So a way of you know, rather than just having a typical arrangement where you've got one sound that keeps building and building and building, or one sound that's just the same. You know, this this is a way of actually being able to put extra bits into the arrangement. Um, so yeah, 